Hello and uh, welcome to the Z Capture software overview. Uh, today we're going to be kind of showing some of the features of the software as well as um, actually going through and processing some, some content so that you can see how to do it. So let's go ahead and dive in. So within the software we're really going to be concerning ourselves with these three interfaces most of the time. Um, so over here we have all of our, our settings and options. We've got our preview window on the right hand side and then down below we've got our um, sequence of images that we've imported for the specific rotation shot we're doing. So the best way to kind of illustrate how these different elements work is just honestly to start using them. So let's go ahead and start a project uh, using those glasses we shot in our last demo. So to get started, our, our source directory is what we're going to concern ourselves with. And the source directory is the directory where we've saved our content. Generally speaking, best practices is uh, every time you do a shot or a sequence, um, when you import it to your computer, you want to take and break them up into separate directories. That just makes for a lot easier uh, and a lot quicker processing and takes very little time up front. So here we've got on my desktop, the folder for our glasses. Uh, now, just for sake of this um, demo video, I've gone ahead and saved these all as 1024 by 768, and that just speeds up the load time, makes it a little easier to work with, but you can work with the raw files right off your camera. It just takes a little bit longer to load up uh, the interface here and import all the images. So here with our sequence imported, uh, we can see all the images that make up this rotation. And to kind of get started here, you know, a couple things I immediately see. I don't really like the start shot that we're using here, the first uh, shot in the sequence. And I can already tell that the um, actual image is kind of washed out and it's not very vivid. So I'm going to kind of start off by finding an image here that I like, um, an angle that looks good. Uh, there you go, that one looks all right to me. And I'm gonna mash the start here button, and basically what that means is the sequence is gonna start and end there. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna start actually trying to make that image look a little bit better. So to do that, we've got our quality and um, image settings in this area right here. And so what I need to do is basically manipulate the image to the point where I feel good about the end result. So to do that, what I'm going to ultimately do is just kind of work on the um, brightness, contrast, probably the gamma settings here. It looks like I've got a pretty good white background, but we're going to kind of get into that here in a second. So to start off, I'm going to push that gamma down just a hint and just add a little bit more depth in that color. And the other thing I can do is I can come in and add a little bit of contrast. And now we're actually getting pretty close to where our colors could be. Now I can I can push this quite a ways, uh, and we can make things pretty unrealistic. So the uh, the important thing is, you know, stay within the realm of, of reasonable. And uh, you know, you can always look at your subject matter if you need to uh, to to see how accurate it is. Now another trick is is the background color. Now this looks pretty white to me, but we've actually got the ability in our settings to change our preview window's background color. And the significance of that is, is you know, if you do have an image that is overly washed out, possibly a little too dark on gamma, there we go. We can start to see, well, there was a little bit of an inconsistency in the lighting in the background. And, you know, then you just need to play with your gamma and your contrast just a little bit to wash that out so that you have a nice, clean, infinite background in your composition here. So I feel pretty good about kind of some of the, the colors here. Um, now the trick is, you know, how does it really look? Um, and uh, so that I'm just going to simply hit our, our preview over here. And what we're doing is we're, we're basically taking and processing these images. Here's our timeline of progress. Um, into an actual rotation that we can actually interact with. That lets us basically spin the product around, make sure we don't have a frame when it's you know facing away from the camera that has a discrepancy in it or any other kind of unusual problems. There we go. And so we've got it now open in our player and we're able to see, there we go, the 
product spinning. Looks like uh, everything looks pretty clean to me. I don't see any major blemishes and the color looks good all the way around. So I'd say this is probably good enough we can take and go ahead and use it. So the final things I want to consider here, I'll go ahead and stop my preview, are any of the additional settings that maybe are associated with this. So right now I'm processing this at, at a medium sized image, which means it's 640 pixels wide. And for me, that's kind of an ideal uh, width to take and, and uh, integrate with most websites. And you can go larger or smaller, or you can go completely custom with that setting as well. Next, we've got our rotation mode, and Z Capture will let you take and produce two types of rotation modes uh, 360, and it'll just continuously loop. Or you can also do a panning shot, and basically that plays from first to last and then last to first. Uh, really a good setting to use if you have an object you're shooting that has a very disinteresting back on it, for example. Um, next we have our rotation settings. Uh, we can reverse the order of play, uh, kind of a personal preference. Um, and we've also got autoplay, another personal preference, where you know if uh, you want the content to load up and immediately start playing um, and kind of draw attention to it, that's a great setting to turn on. Uh, next we've got our, our drag and drop settings, and so we've got inertia and easing. And basically inertia is you take and, and kind of flick a, the content, you know, with something like a tablet. Uh, it'll keep spinning, and then easing is how long it takes for that to slow down and come to a rest. And then the hand cursor is really great for PC users because it lets them know they can grab, click, and drag the actual content. And then finally, we have the toolbar settings. And so really, we've got two primary settings for that. You can always see it, or you can have it basically only show up if you hover over the content. Um, this is a great way to kind of hide the bar when you're playing a rotation, and you want to uh, perhaps not have it interfere with the actual content in the player window. So once I'm satisfied with basically my settings here, um, and you know it's ready to kind of move on to the production side of things, I can go ahead and set my destination directory. In this case, I'm going to create a new folder and go ahead and process my images. And basically now what it's doing is optimizing all the images, processing them all with the color settings and all the different other setting options we've configured here, and preparing it for um, use on the web. So it's creating our JavaScript and HTML files, our configuration setting files, and basically encapsulating everything into a single directory, which we just created in this case, test one is what I called it, to where now, um, there we go, uh, we have our output. And so we create a thumbnail. The thumbnail is uh, 299 by 199 in pixel width. Uh, we have our rotation HTML, which is our um, actual content uh, and we'll kind of get into that in another tutorial for integration and our settings XML this is where we've got all of our settings um, that we've configured as well as our image directory with our optimized output and in this case we were able to take and actually optimize our images down to roughly 16k 17k each and that's a pretty good place to be when we have this many images we're loading into a sequence so some of the other things you may be interested in doing um, is, for instance, taking and cropping an image. Um, so when we choose our cropping, we get basically our little dots here that we're able to take and, and crop down our image on. And in some cases where you have a very narrow piece of content, um, and you don't want to not only have all the real estate that you're losing, but you also want to take and have it play in a more condensed way, a little less bandwidth, a few other benefits come from it. Um, you can take and crop down your images and uh, really easily um, create a nice output. Now, the trick is when you crop your images, and uh, one of the easier things to do here is to change my, my background color. So there we go, now we can see the actual crop size. One of the important things when you do a crop is making sure that your content still fits within it all the way around in the sequence. That's why you can click on any image, it highlights green, and um, then you know exactly what it looks like without changing your actual start sequence. 
And this actually looks pretty good. That was a pretty tight crop that we did there. And it uh, looks like we're staying within the, uh, within the actual player window on all of our content. So kind of a nice feature to use. So next we have our hotspot manager. And hotspots are a great way to add you know, more content, more information um, about maybe product features than normally you would have with just a static rotation. And so basically what we're able to take and do is create up to five unique points of data um, within a, a sequence. In this case, I'm going to create a super, if I can type. <laughs> we have a super feature. There we go. And so, oops, sorry, I mashed the save button. There we go, okay, no harm, no foul. And so I'm able to take and basically just simply click, click and drag and place this feature wherever I want it. Um, and what's nice is I can then take and apply this to all the different frames in the sequence. Um, I can apply the details to all, all the different frames in the sequence. If I have something that moves out of frame, I can turn on and off things uh, with just simply a checkbox as it rotates around and it makes it basically a very nice way of taking and creating really meaningful content. So to give a little more in-depth example here, um, I've got a chess piece which I've gone ahead and applied it to, and we can see that when I, when I hover over the hotspot, we actually get a, a little text pop-up, some information about the feature. Um, we can also see that I can simply just rotate, and when I'm rotating, it disappears, it, it only fades back into play um, when uh, we stop rotating. So that ends this kind of quick overview uh, of the ZCapture software and how easy it is to use. Um, by all means, uh, we'll be breaking down more of the uh, details and information on the ZCapture website uh, of a lot of these features and uh, giving a little more in-depth tutorial on how to use them. So feel free to check out zcapture.com for more information and uh, thanks for watching this, uh, this training video.